Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how I make some applets related to trigonometry. You can find my example here in my GeoGebra page and maybe follow your links, uh, follow the links below to find my page. And here you can see I'm trying to make a point in the coordinate plane and study its angles, the distance and x and y coordinate as a kind of um, uh, elementary examples about uh, trigonometric ratios and its definitions. And you can find few pages here okay, related to the same act similar activities. Okay, now I start with a blank page. So I'm now opening the GeoGebra file. Okay, here I start with a, or an origin. Okay, and then at a point somewhere in the coordinate plane, and we name it as point P, okay, and add another point here, okay, point A, and now I want an angle, so I create an angle, and also a line segment to join P and O, okay, now I can zoom in to enlarge this part, okay, you can see the angle here, and I also add a unit circle, okay. So you can have a try to track the point P and then see how these values change. For this angle here, I can also rename it either here or double click here, okay. So I now go to change it to the name theta and you can find Greek alphabet here in the keyboard, right? Okay? So when you need the keyboard, just go to the bottom left, right? you can see the keyboard. So this is now renamed as theta. And so with these values, we can also add some others. Right? We can now name the x coordinate of the point P. So x to P, x of P, okay? This is the coordinate, x coordinate of P. And similarly, I call B the y coordinate of P. Okay? And then I also like to have a distance. Uh, which is the square root of a square plus b square. Okay, so you have the distance, and you can also use this keyboard right to input square root, and if you like. So uh, let me see anything else. Okay, I have the a x y coordinate distance and the angle, and now I also like to add the cosine value c equals to the cosine of theta. So maybe I go to the keyboard again to choose, okay, in this here, so choose theta. So you have cosine theta and enter, then you can see the value uh, cosine theta here, all right? Similarly, I can define um, the sine theta, all right, the value here, 0 0.69. So if you track the point P, then all these will be updated. And on the algebra window, actually you can uh, read, you can express this value in different ways. You can show only the values, right? so here are just the values, or you can show only the definition. Okay? So that will also be very neat. But when you click inside, then okay, you can edit it. Or you can also change the grouping to show the object types. And this way, you can see all the numbers in the same area, or you can collapse it. Also, the point you may not need it, right? and the segment perhaps, or you can close it. But you need probably the angle and the numbers to be shown in the algebra window to discuss with the student. Okay, and you can also show description value, definitions, and value. Right? So you can see both the definition and the values at the same time. It's up to you how you would like to change it. Okay, so I go back to the definition. Now, I want to also, uh, let me see, maybe I delete the, ang the circle by mistakes, let me add it again, okay, so I have a circle here, alright, so this is called a cone, alright, okay, so um, now maybe you want to display it, right, in another uh, window, in a better way, just like my example here, and you can find that. I display this value in another window and also use a checkbox right, to show or hide 
the value or the objects in the screen. Okay, and here is what I'm going to do. Uh, I will need another uh, graphic window. So under this menu, you can choose View, and you can see the algebra and graphics windows are now shown. I want to add another graphic window, so it's graphics two. Okay, so here is the new area, and you can rearrange it at the top or in the middle somewhere here. You can drag it. Right, so use the arrow button to uh, change it. Okay, all right. I can close this menu now. You can see two area. This is another new graphic area. Okay, you can draw graph here, but actually I don't need a graph, so I hide the axis. Um, maybe I change the color to distinguish. So use the background color, turn it to yellow. Okay, so I close it again. All right. So here is the gear to change the background. Okay, so I have a new area to place the numbers in a better way. Now I can choose the text okay, button and create a text somewhere here. Now I name it as x equal because I want to show the x coordinates of p. But actually in my applet, I named the coordinate as a. So I should choose the algebra objects here, which is named as a. Okay, now you can see th the difference. Here it is A stand for the objects in the, uh, in the GeoGebra. Uh, it's not a text. X equal is the text you just import. All right? And you can see the preview. So X equal 1 instead of A because the current values of A is equal to 1. And you can show it as latex formula, so which is very nice. Right? Or ch change the serif. Um, so now it is OK. So now I click OK. And here I have a value, and you can place it here, and you can open the style bra and, st and then try try to make it bigger. All right, so you maybe pick it now. All right, and the, if you drag uh, now, I am dragging inside this area. You find that actually you uh, accidentally display the value because you're zooming. Okay, if I drag my mouse then. It may be zooming in this area, and the text may be moved. So you may want to stick it. Right? Uh, you can use this pin to stick it as absolute position on the board. Right? Then even when I drag the mouse again, zooming in and out, you won't see the effect. Okay? You won't see the changes here. OK, let's continue. Um, I do the same for y. y coordinates equals to in the objects uh, tab. Then you find that actually it is equal to B according to my definition. Okay, and check preview, latex format, sheriff. All right, it's up to your up to you what you want to choose. Okay, so here is another value, wide value, and let's continue. And here I would like to display D. D stands for D. I use the same letter, right? But in the Object area here, you should choose D again, okay, according to the formula. Okay, oh, I forgot to turn it into latex, so I double click it, double click it, and then you can edit it. Um, turn it into latex and serif. Okay, so so you have another. Now, let's see if I do not pin this two, then you'll find that when I drag it, okay. Then these two are displaced, but not this one. So you can pin it later. Right, I will show you later how to do it again. Um, let me see. Okay, the next one I want to show will be theta. So for theta, I first input the letter here. So this is the letter. Okay, equals. So I'm going to type it. But for the objects, you have to choose actually the one the angle that I name as theta. Okay. So in this case, when you preview it, you find that the value is displayed. Okay, and turn it into later. Okay, so you can see the object value. Try to move it right, and then drag it on the side. Okay, and then now let's let's see. Maybe I now go to to the cosine theta and sine theta. Cosine theta. All right. So I use the Greek alphabet here. Uh, cosine theta equals the value c. Okay, c is the cosine theta actually. 
And if you look at the preview, then you find that it's shown here. Okay. Uh, last one, I will do the sine sine theta and equal the value s. But instead of s, I can also simply type sine theta. But I have to choose the theta first. Okay, so I now choose the choose the theta and click inside it. Then you find that you can do something on this value. Okay, so this theta is the one in the uh, you define as the angle it should be above here. Okay. And at the same time, I can type in any formula to do the calculation. So instead of predefining it as, as a value s, I can simply type any formula here in terms of the, uh, make use of the feature and then get the value I want. Okay. So let's look at the preview. So I can still get the same value. Okay. Okay. So I have now all the values ready and I can place it inside the uh, graph area. And you can make it bigger. Pin it. Similarly, make it bigger and pin it. Okay, I think I've done all of them. So here are the values I want to display. And you can drag the point P again to see how it works. Okay. So probably this will display the value in a better way. Alright, now next thing I would like to demonstrate is to use the checkbox to show and hide objects. Okay, so here is one checkbox. I want to put here. I want to use it to show the point and the segment. So I want to choose which one I want to display. P, P point P, okay. And also the segment, segment F. Okay, P O. So these two will be controlled by this checkpoint, what I call points. Okay, this is the caption. So I just click it. Go to the proof. So you can see that right, the point can be hidden or shown. Now similarly, I want to make a checkbox to show the angle. Okay. So I may not need any caption. So maybe I just leave it blank. And then here I want to show the angle here on the screen. So I choose the angle, and if I click OK, and you can see this is the name of the checkbox H. Right? But I can right click it and then, well, forget about the label. So I don't have any label. Right? But if I click on it, then you find that angle can be shown or hidden. Um, on the other hand, I can also make this checkbox control the text here. So I don't need any name again. Now, but this time it is controlling the text. It's not the actual feature. So I choose this one. Okay. And once again, I can hide the label. Move a little bit here closer. Now, if I click this one, then it is a text being hidden, while the angle is here right, being hidden or shown by this checkbox. Okay. Right, so you can do the same with the other values in this uh, uh, graphic area. And finally, I want to change the definitions of the point. So this is one way to demonstrate how the point uh, uh, leads to the changes in these values. But in my example, I have another version where the point can be generated by button randomly. Okay, So if I click a button, then you can see the point will be generated. And I can also close it, right? or maybe take away the angle, so you don't see the actual points, but you can, um, but you can still create something, okay, uh, randomly, and the new point will be tamed again and again. Now, how can I do this with a button? Let's go back to the value here. I have the point A. Sorry, value A equal to x coordinate of P, and B equal to y coordinate of P. So first of all, I redefine it first, make it a, just a number, a equal to 1, and b equal to, let's say, 2, or any number you like. Okay. So now I redefine a and b. They are no longer the coordinates of p. They are just a constant in number. Okay. But I will change this value by button. Here, I now can have a choice of a button. 
so you can set this click somewhere here at the but uh, at the top so I call this button a next point okay and it should contain a script that means uh, something that you can use to control the objects in the screen and one command that you can try is set value I want to set the value of a okay make it a random number um, between negative 5 and 5 okay so uh, in this way it, you will get a number which is actually an integer between negative 5 and 5 okay now let's see how it works I click OK so I have a button here I can drag it right so we've been here alright so when I click look here carefully when I click next point the x value is changed okay but not the y value of course not yet okay now I'm going to change the y value as well so I can um, edit it this time I will show it in the setting window here on the right just like many other objects you can choose different ways to uh, edit right, the objects so let me see um, now I have to do it in the scripting area and add one more line in the script so I can set B in the same way random from negative 5 to 5 okay when it's done I can just close it and let's see what happens if I click the point next button again then both X and Y value that means A and B so are being changed by this button okay now, but of course you will find that the point P is not affected by A and B unless I redefine the point P so I can edit the point P in the setting again in the basic tab P is just a value because it's just a free value uh, on the screen and you can change it anytime you like however I will like it to be now defined by A and B okay so this is the definition A and B are the value here which in turn is controlled by the next button okay used to generate some random number so okay now I can close it uh, I should enter it first and then close it so if I let's click next you find that when we will zoom out so you find that actually the point P will be I randomly created okay, each time I press the button okay okay the final modification of the script here I right click it again to change the setting and in the scripting area so maybe I want it to be some decimal values not only integers so I can change the range from negative 50 to 50 but divided by 10 okay so this random number will be divided by 10 All right, so you will get a number from negative 5 to 5 with uh, one decimal place similarly I can do the same for B okay and I will control it within the range from negative 5 to 5 with a one decimal place right now I can click it again to check it so it should, it should work now right now with this one then you can hide the point hide the angle and let student guess where the numbers are of course you can also hide this value uh, using the checkbox again and then you can uh, de uh, decide which value to show and then ask the student to guess the position of the point right, before you show it all right finally uh, I may not need the algebra window now so I can close it right so what's left behind is just the graphic window and uh, okay the first graphic window and the second graphic window okay and so here uh, maybe you should fix the point if you don't want to move it accidentally okay similarly the point is fixed and also it can be hidden right well so it should work now okay so have a try with this construction